Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. And you're listening to the midweek version of the Fiber Talk podcast that is for needlework artists. Hey, we made it back. Yes. I feel like I You made it back. <laughs> I feel like I got thrown out <laughs> thrown out to the wolves for three weeks. <laughs> You've just uh, been crazy busy. Oh. Crazy busy. Yeah, it's been uh it's been an experience. Well, so, what, 28 years we lived in the other house, so um and the last time we moved, our kids were little kids in elementary school and you know, there you are. And uh right. moving moving to a different state and the whole bit has been uh what a ride. Jeez. And yeah, you know, and you get here and and I mean the place is as move in ready as anything could be, but then it's all the little things that you have to do, the things you have to buy and uh, little things that have to be done to get the, to get the place, you know, the way you want it. And there's still more of that, but a lot of it just has to be done right away just so you can function on top of unpacking. So, uh. yeah, cause this is what, this is Wednesday. We moved in a week ago by Monday, we were pretty much over the hump, and I, I, I was able, Sunday night, I was able to start working on my studio office, which had been the goal to get to that. So uh, able to do that and uh, start to order pieces for that and get things organized, and I have boxes of stash sitting outside the room that um, can't come in until I'm ready. <laughs> So are they blocking the hallway? You know, is it just lined along the hallway? Well, it's, it's two bedrooms <laughs> on a top floor that we're only using for offices, so it can block. It's okay. It's yeah. all right. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that whole that whole part is yet to occur. But I got to get um, I got to get the room set up before I start unloading because you know that's just more weight to move around once I get things set up. So. Um, all right. But it's 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 working out. It the thing that has worked out best is, of course, we bought the house looking at videos. Our daughter and our realtor walking around doing FaceTime, and so that's how we selected the place. And then we came for inspection. Well, the house has been empty for two plus months. It's a townhouse, so it's been empty for two plus months. And so you get here for inspection, and it's empty and tape measure, and you know we can imagine how things are going to go but then you still just don't know till you put them there right and uh it, right. as it turns out everything is working out much better than we expected we're really happy with it it's really really coming together quite nicely so um that that was a plus because the last time we bought a house we looked at it two or three times it was just across town um, you know, we could take our time with it and this thing was hurry up and buy it before someone else takes it. So, um, right. Yeah. Right. And that, and that's, that's never, that's not fun. That's no. not a fun way to, no, <laughs> no, no. And, and you don't get to answer your questions like, you know, to, to come in. I mean, when we saw it the first time was, was the inspection and, uh, that guy was only here so long and then we had to get out because we didn't own the place. And so you couldn't just spend time. And um, pictures only do right. so much, you know. So, but uh, the studio, I got my table, my table and shelf connection that fit. Obviously, I mean that was no problem at all. And then my work desk is going is in here, and then I have another little three drawer, two drawer chest uh, that I'm going to use to store linen and that kind of thing in. And I wanted to put in. Kim Young at Sassy Jacks connected me with a husky table. It's a, basically a, a wood top workbench for whatever you want to use it for, but it's adjustable height. It's on wheels, and the adjustable height is my stitching table up to 40 inches or something like that, so 29 to 40 inches. And I really wanted to get a, a six-foot long table to have surface but I wanted it to be something that could be moved. And and this and this table does that. It adjusts up and down, and then it has rollers on it? Right, right. And it fits 
Cause, cause there's a, nice. there's a, there's like a, I think there's a four foot, there's a five foot and a six foot. And I wanted the six foot cause you know, if you, if you don't get maximum surface area then, and regret it, you know, then it costs money to upgrade. But if you get more than you need and don't need it, so what, you know? Um, right. Right. Yeah. So it fits, it fits comfortably and it's going to be easy to move around. And so that worked out. And uh, as it's turning out, I'm going to have uh, plenty of storage and plenty of workroom, and I'll be able to move that thing around and make kind of a L-shaped work table when, when I'm stitching so I can spread things out. And, um, yeah, it's, I'm really pleased with it. It's going to work out great. And, um, yeah, I can't wait. Of course, you have to order them, and then that's going to be 10 days and blah, blah, blah. But um, right, when it right. all gets here, it, but that's just it. I can't set anything up because the acoustic panels that I need to kill echo, I hope people can't hear too much echo now. It's a little bit, but uh, but I need to put those around the room. Well, I can't really, I don't want to start putting stuff in place till I've hung all those on the walls. And um, right. uh, so I kind of, I'm kind of in limbo till they show up, but I couldn't really get here couldn't order them until I had seen the room and seen pieces in the room to know how many to get and whether it would fit. So I was stuck, but, um, yeah, it's going to work out great. It's going to be lots of surface area, plenty of storage. I've got a full double closet to store in, uh, in addition to the chest of drawers and then the shelving that, uh, is connected to my main table. So I've got plenty of room. Um, it's really, really going to be nice and uh two windows so i'll have plenty of daylight when it's not 90 degrees and humid and the west sun beating in uh that was one of the things that we we did uh right away was we got uh light blocking curtains to hang up because marg and i are our offices the windows are on the west side and oh man in the afternoon the heat just pounds in so oh um, i bet yeah so we got those and that helped um but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to have a real nice work area. There's a, the spot where I wanted to hang a TV is going to work out. So I'll be able to sit here and stitch and watch TV and have all the space I need. So, um, yeah. You watch your, watch your um, blow them up, beat them up movies. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Do, do fine needlework and watch people kill each other. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. fun. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who could ask for more? <laughs> right, perfect, perfect. Yeah, now that I think about it, I might have to get a refrigerator in here with some Diet Pepsi just to uh, so I don't have to go anywhere. That's yeah. right. You know, why bother going all the way downstairs or going to the kitchen? Oh, you know, uh, that's too much. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think I have a corner for that. Yeah. All right. There's there's a plan. <laughs> No, I'm really, really excited about it because it's really going to offer, and, and it's the kind of thing where I can, you know, it's a room, so I can close the door, and um, back in the other place, I had to, I didn't keep things very neat, but I was always conscious that if people came to the family room, that my mess was there, and um, now this is out of the way and uh, can't be seen, so, yeah. Right. And you can close it from um, grandsons, too, you know, coming in and wanting you to think? play through your threads or something. You think? <laughs> Man, those two little guys can cover ground. Holy smokes. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, we've already done our first babysitting stint. So we got here uh, Wednesday and Saturday night. Um, they were excited because Grandma and Grandpa are the best babysitters ever, ever. Now that's <laughs> right. key. So, uh, but, yeah, we had a blast with them. And, uh um, and then the best part of being a grandparent is you get to go home. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yep. They're all yours. <laughs> they're yours. We wound them up and now they're yours. <laughs> That's right. Have a good time. Yep. So, yeah, so it's just working out really well. We're really happy with it. And the stitching area is, is yeah, it's going to be great. It really is. I'm excited. Yep. Um we got so much stuff. Well, we had stuff before we took the hiatus. And folks, sorry about the hiatus. It just had to happen. I just uh, I couldn't yeah. keep it going and uh, do all the packing and moving and cleaning and all the things that needed to be done. So, um, and no, son, that, this, that would have, you would have you would have been banging your head against the wall. That yeah, was. <laughs> yeah. 
And this past Sunday, it was like 3 o'clock. I thought, oh, I forgot to post an encore show. And then I just said to myself, no, just stop. Just get this stuff done so that by Wednesday we can be back in action. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. So we'll be back uh, fresh. The show that I had promised with Mc Melissa McLeod of the Wool and Floss and Megan Holmes of the Needle Point Clubhouse, that'll be the Sunday show. Uh, that I had promised that before the hiatus, and then it just wasn't going to work. So that'll be a Sunday show, and Megan Holmes now, the Needle Point Clubhouse, that is here uh, not too far from me. So uh, mm. I'll, go, I'll go take a few pictures. I might have to pay a visit between now and the weekend and uh, meet Megan face-to-face -face and take some pictures. So, and, and you wouldn't buy any threads, though, while you were there? Oh, no, no. That, no, that wouldn't be, no, no. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you need, Beth? Let's make a list. <laughs> I I think I'm good for a little bit, maybe. Okay, well, I'll FaceTime you when I get there, and then you can see if you're still good. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a free service that I provide. I'll FaceTime from the shop in front of the threads, oh, yeah. and then, you know, you can say right, no. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, Thanks yeah. for the temptation. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep showing them till you break down and say, all right, one of these and one of these. Yeah. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And d just don't go by the painted canvases. No? Uh-oh. No, please don't. Uh-oh. You aren't thinking about it. I am seriously thinking about starting a painted canvas, but <laughs> I I have some in my stash. Oh, I okay. I don't really need to go buy one so it's like you know because i'll pick yeah. one up for you Maybe you know I, if you have a favorite i'll pick one up for you yeah i bet you would i bet you would yeah i've got a box of stuff coming to you so i can easily put that right in the box and it, it, there'd be room there'd be room well a bigger box you know whatever <laughs> okay all right yeah, yeah. well all right then then that's what we'll do i'll facetime you and, and help you buy a, a painted canvas and uh and some threads oh so kind so thoughtful yeah. yeah i'll do that for you beth just for you yeah yeah no yeah okay let's see this is uh this is wednesday i think i have i think friday's free enough that i could uh, go over there and yeah okay we'll set up a time and then we'll help you out yep okay. all right right just what i needed just mm -hmm. more temptation yeah more okay. temptation it's you know it's I, I'm happy to do it for you. I really am. Yeah. 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 And I, and I bet I bet Megan would probably help in, in in this in this endeavor too. Probably. Well, I think if oh. we talk to her, we could probably get her to a, offer an assist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Select some threads and. Um, yeah. Maybe All right. Maybe a stitch guide. Yeah. Well, we we could do that too. Yeah, a stitch guide. You know the threads. Maybe some beads. Yeah. Yeah, beads. Yeah, yeah, beads. Okay, so Friday it is. Friday it is. Friday afternoon. We're going to set this up, and you're going to be uh, happy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Gary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not like have I don't it. have anything else to do. You know, I no know, other projects. No. Well, as you said, you no. were bored, so we're going to fix you up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Friday it is, and then we'll uh, then we'll show everybody uh, uh, next Wednesday what you're working on. It'll be great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you're causing trouble. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm, I'm here to help. Uh -huh. That's all. I'm just here to help. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Master enabler. Yep. Speaking of threads, tonight Kathy Ray thread talk. Now I had mentioned this is how bad I was so screwed up that I had mentioned that Carrie Noss was going to do needle lace tonight. But then I got my weeks goofed up and realized that this is the third Wednesday, and so it's Kathy Ray night. And so we'll have Thread Talk tonight with Kathy Ray, and then Carrie was kind enough to adjust, and she will be with us next Wednesday for needle lace demonstration. And then the following Wednesday, which will be June 30. Dima Santina is going to come back, and if you recall, uh, it was several weeks ago, many, uh, three or four months ago, I would guess, that we got to look at Dima's work. 
and she's been doing some just some amazing stuff since then. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah she'll uh, like. I just stop every time I see it on Instagram. It's like holy smokes, lady. <laughs> The Korean stuff she's been working on has been fascinating. Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious about that. So Dima will be with us on the 30th, and then that will take us to the first uh, Wednesday of July, which I assume we will then go back to Sydney, Australia. But I don't know what the uh, exhibit is for July. But I will say that if you did not see the June exhibit tour with Margaret Lee, you must go watch it. Yes. Holy smokes. I didn't know you could she, do I didn't know you could do that stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Well, and and it was fascinating cuz you know, I know Deb DeCrane who does Japanese embroidery. She says that it's just a whole different level of thread painting and what you do with the Chinese. It's just it's stuff. Yeah. So, so, did, so did go that, watch okay. Margaret, that Margaret. Reed. Yeah, I haven't been able to talk with Deb. So did that show captivate her? Yes, very much so. She went back and looked at the lion again. Oh, oh. And uh -huh. she, she, she just was fascinated by that. She goes, she's, she was just, I think she was just flabbergasted, just how that was done and the stitching on that. Um because we talked about it later and she was, she said, yes, that's a whole different level of, of work. Yeah. The Chinese. Uh, Cause see that's, is. that was, she's kind of, for me, the bellwether. Um, of course her, her stitching, her Japanese stitching is, is phenomenal. And I wondered yes. what her reaction was to seeing uh, Margaret's work and that of her students. Um, and so, so we did, we did captivate her then. Okay, good, good. Cause if she was yes. going, yeah, that's nice. I got to move along. Then I was going to be disappointed, but not the case. huh? No, 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 no. Good. She loved it. She ah. loved it. Yeah. Oh so, man. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it. And in fact, um, we talked a little bit about it in the Ode to the Palette class with Natalie Dupuy and sent people over there to watch it. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, the the re I I can't get over the reversible ones where she's. It, it was the it, yeah with the reversible that's amazing. The white flower that was done. Oh yeah. That was just one color of silk. It was just the way you laid the thread. Yes. That gave you the shadows and the depth. Yes, that was showing off. That mind. was showing off. <laughs> I couldn't get my mind around that one. Yeah. I just could not. <laughs> yep. Yeah. When she said, because when she said that's all the same thread, I thought she'd misspoken. But no, it's it's knowing what to do with that thread according to the light, and yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So, it's just amazing. Somebody described it as otherworldly. And I think that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go watch mm -hmm. that. Uh, Margaret Lee just, uh, um, well, you, you can go to wetalkfiber.com. I sent the video to everyone, but if you go to the, the live section of the YouTube channel, the fiber talk YouTube channel, you can see it there. And now April before the exhibit is gone, then she's going to go through and make a more formal video of the exhibition. So we'll have a link. She'll send a link, and we'll have a link for that when she makes that video too. So that uh, you know that that won't have questions and other things going on um, in there. So you'll be able to see that too. And uh, and yeah. Well, what made what made that interesting as a show is she went through it as it historically. Mm -hmm. um, how it started and then her more modern work. I found that very interesting too. Yeah. just the, the flow of history with the with the Chinese um, needlework. So, yeah. Yeah. The Im influences of the different dynasties and then, mm -hmm. then I, I felt like it was a really stupid question, but I felt I had to ask it, you know, do, do techniques carry over from dynasty to dynasty 
And and then as she went through that, you started to see how that happened. And, right. Um, yeah, it's the, but the influences each time are, are amazing. And, of course, the Chinese have, <clears throat> for, for however we feel about China these days, uh, they have always had an incredible appreciation for art. And, uh, and there's so much to learn from, from the art culture of that country. Um, yes, yes. And it, it's just, and it's, and it's beautiful, the needlework that she was showing in this, and, and the things that her, where the, her first year students were, I know. this was their first piece <laughs> or their second, I was like, oh, please. I know, I know. All right, I'm out. You know, I'm out. I can't yeah, do that. Not, I'm out. I can't do that. That's that's beyond me. I'll uh, just admire from the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's just it. And of course, by the time you take one of her classes, you actually have to know how to thread a needle. But still, uh, to be good enough that she would include you in her own exhibition really speaks to the caliber of her students. Um, yes. Because April yes. April said to me that that Margaret basically put that exhibition together that uh, they had so much stuff they had to call it out they had to call out a whole bunch of stuff because there was just so much but it was basically margaret so she's if she's making most of the decisions and then saying all right my first year students need to have this piece and this piece wow wow yeah yeah yep that was good that was really good so check that out check that out um Actually, check out, uh, you know, go back and look at all of our, our tours. I mean, other than technical difficulties of trying to do a live tour from Illinois to Sydney, Australia, um, other than those things, each one has had its own um, quality, special aspect to it that I've, I've really enjoyed doing them. And getting to see stuff from the other side of the world like that is just such a treat. Right. And have someone, you know, you, you can go to a gallery, you know, galleries and things are opening up, but to have an artist explain to you what you're seeing, that's harder to come by. You yeah. Know? yeah. To, or, to go, or to go to a museum and have, it's like you've got your own docent going around and explaining everything to you. It's fabulous. Yeah. You, you know, you can't beat it. And, and, you know, we're not going to Australia anytime soon. So. <laughs> no. No, and, and that's the thing. Even if you, you say, yeah, I can go to exhibitions here in the States, but then these are things you can't see in the States. And, uh, and like, yeah, I, I'll never get to Australia, um, though I'd like to. Uh, it, but, you know, it's just, yeah, you get that different um, uh, different look. Like the quilts two, two weeks ago, the quilts, and to have someone describing and showing how those quilts are put together – I mean, you know, fiber talk isn't a quilting thing, but I don't care. I mean, that is just amazing needlework all the way around. It, and, and and for me, what's interesting, I love looking at quilts, even though I can't I can't make them um, because I'm looking at, at the color at it, you're looking at them for inspiration. And I think that's how um, needle artists influence each other. You can look yeah. at the the way the color they're using. Um, the colors in those quilts, and you think, hmm, how can I reinterpret that into needlework? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it was, I thought that one was interesting too. Just, um, that was a great talk. Well, all of them have been great. I've enjoyed them yeah. all. So, well, yeah, and that's exactly, you're exactly right on the quilts. That's what you take out of it, even if you don't ever make a quilt. That's what you take out of it is the patterns and the textures. And all of those things, and then you start to say, "All right, with my needlework, how can I interpret something like that, or right. use that to inspire me to do something different with uh, with a painted canvas, for instance?" Um, right. Yeah. Right. Right. And just and, to, in looking at how different people use colors, or you know, the one lady who was, I think it was the cathedral the way she made that one quilt, I just, I've got to go back and re look at that one. Cause that one was just fascinating. The last quilts we looked at mm -hmm. with that were very, very bright. Um, interesting technique. And I, I don't know why it just kind of the way she was going out of the box on that one. Just, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. 
I want that all white one. Oh, the all white one. Yes. I do. I mean, I, I yeah. I'm sure I, there's no way I could afford it, but uh, I would I would pay for that one. That was stunning. Yeah. Oh, it was. That was amazing. Yep. No, that's uh, it's been a real blessing to have April. You know, and of course, I mean, this is uh, April's making the time to do this, and it's just been such a blessing to have that and and have her as the curator for these exhibitions take the time out to take us through them and to arrange for these artists to come. I mean, she she arranged for Margaret Lee to be there to talk about Margaret Lee's work. And, uh, yeah, like you said, you don't get to do that every day. Um, no. And, no. Yeah. So. No. Yep. Yeah. Check That's those out, folks. Check them out because they're uh, the live tours, and, and we intend to keep doing them as long as April is willing. Um We'll keep doing them because she's she always has something up coming up next. So, um, <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So, I have stitched nothing. My all my stands are collapsed and on a shelf at the moment. I have no idea so, where my projects are at. Oh, th- this is sad. Now, see, <laughs> I was thinking about you a lot because I thought how. There have been, there's times during the year, um, you know, I think around Christmas time when I'm busy making candy or canning season and I'm just too exhausted to pick up a needle and thread. But there's like short periods of time. I mean, when was the last time you did pick up a needle and thread? Do you remember? Oh, it has to be six weeks. I mean, we did. That would be too long. We did the one live show and I actually set something up, uh, but then never, if I did a couple stitches, it was, that was it. But yeah, it's been easily six weeks of, I mean, I've completely lost mental focus on what I was doing. I'm going to have to just regroup completely. Um, cause I, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, um, it just had, you know, so- it, it had to stop. I mean, I couldn't, uh. I couldn't keep doing that and do my day job and pack and all the things that are involved in buying and selling houses. So um, <laughs> sleep and eat. Yeah. Those two things come in too from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so yeah. And I, w- I would find that very difficult and I know there's been times when I'll, ha- but I'll have a simple piece. I'll have something. Well, I think Marion Lang is a great, example um i have it in a hoop um it just uses two threads I, it's mainly cross stitch and it's very simple patterns so it's nice you know i literally have sometimes have said okay i just need to put a couple of stitches in and i'll put in five stitches and i'm like okay i feel better i'm done and you know they can it can go away um but yeah. i can't imagine not stitching for six weeks that's, <laughs> that's well it was it was weird see i i i kept the stuff out because I kept intending to do it. You know, Mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to sit down for a half hour tonight and then I'm either too tired or something comes up. And so I, you know, I intended to, and then it got to a point and this is when I just decided it was hiatus time. Well, you're the one that put it in my head that I I just needed to to just stop the podcast stuff and, and, and do this thing because I, I kept the stuff out, and it dawned on me right right after you said that, that, wait a minute, all of this stuff needs to leave the house. Right. You know, it needs to all get packed and leave the house. And it was kind of, when when you said, hey, you, you know, think about stopping so that I can deal with the moving. And, and then coupled with that was that realization that I'm not just packing up some things and for storage. The house has to get emptied completely. And and that's when it really hit me. And then that's when I said, all right, quit kidding yourself and start packing this stuff. And, you know, just clean things out because you're going to have to do it. And the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. And, um, yeah, then, right. then I just packed it. And, and it was – one of the things was, do I, are, are there things I throw away or get rid of? And I, I couldn't, 
I couldn't bring myself to do that. I kept everything. Because at this juncture, I don't have anything I don't want. So, um, yeah, it took, oh, it took a lot more. I, I really, I had two, three, three large tubs that I thought would handle it all. Uh-uh, not even close. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of embarrassing, actually. Um, <laughs> well, and, and, and that's, I, and I understand, get it, you get to that point where it's like, you know what, I, I don't have the emotional energy let alone the physical energy, to, and this has got to go. I might as well get it done and move through this so I can get to the stage where I can go back to stitching and enjoy it. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. It's just stress. Yeah. It's that... just, I mean, I would think it would have been just stressful sitting there staring at you. You can't stitch. Maybe you want <laughs> to, maybe you can, and you can't, but it's like, okay, I got to pack this. It's got to right. go. Well, that's where it came down to. That's re- literally, you're, you're dead right. You're, uh, all right. Quit, just quit, just put it away and leaving it out was just pressure to do something. And no, just it's in the boxes, it's taped up, it's done. And I had to do that with my cycling stuff too. I mean, I kept trying to ride my bike and I really knew that we needed to be packing or I needed to be working. And so I go out for rides every couple of days, which is not normal for me. Normal is uh, getting myself to take a day off in a week. And finally, I did the same thing, and uh, you you were the catalyst for it. Uh, I did the same thing with the cycling stuff. I said, "All right, I'm again. I'm I'm going to quit kidding myself," and and all the cycling gear is getting packed away, shoes, everything. And uh, at the time, it was cold out, so I was wearing heavier clothes outside, and I did the same thing with that. And I just said, "All right, you 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 have permission to not ride till we get to the new place." And uh, like I haven't ridden in three weeks, I think. Yeah. Which been years since I did that, but it just had to stop. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yep. It's, it was just, it was just weird mental dynamics that you go through. And it was really that, that I realized, no, no, this house has to get emptied. Everything has to come out of this house. When we drive out of the driveway, it has to be absolutely empty. And I, I don't know what I was thinking up till that point, but it was then that, okay, all right, we got to get after this, you know, so. Just, just a little bit of a mind game. And I think, you know, too, you, you know, you've lived there for a long time. Um, yeah. So emotionally attached and it's going to, it's hard. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, yep. I can imagine it was hard. But, yeah. So. Well, have you decided the first thing you're going to pull out of your stash and work on? Have you thought about that? Oh, I'm I'm going to think about. Uh, I'm going to uh, for projects that are just projects. I'm going to work on Spring Hill, but really the first thing, and this is where I feel terrible, is the ode to the palette class. Uh, you and I have talked well, about sharing work, and I haven't even delivered on my end of that. But that's the that's really the top priority. As soon as I get so I can uh, set something up um, is to start working on that and start pulling my weight and learning from that class because uh, that class has been, I mean, you're learning a lot, aren't you? Yes. It's, um, I knew it was a, she was a good teacher, but um, the first week, I I think I participated, we both participated in the zoom, but she, I hadn't posted anything i hadn't put anything in the class discussion and she reached out to me and said Are, is everything okay you know can i help you with anything and that was great you know i i don't know if i think she did that for other people too but she's natalie's such a great teacher and i learned so much we hadn't even taken a stitch we hadn't done any stitching for the piece um, that we we're working on I learned so much about color the first few weeks, um, reading the articles, um, doing her the little. Uh, well, some people didn't do anything with the information. I think they just read it and they absorbed it. But I had to physically um, make little samples of like what's what are the what's the primary, what's an analogous color scheme, what's a monochromatic. I know those things. But I just cut out little pieces of paper and glued them on and seeing it made a difference. And then she had some things 
about color theory that I'd never heard before. And so I did paper experiments of the color theory. And I was just flabbergasted. I was showing everybody. I said, look at this. See, <laughs> see how this color, what happens when you use, um, what happens to a color when you put it on different backgrounds, which we know as needle workers, if you, you know, where people say, well, I've taken this fabric, this linen, and I've, you know, done a floss toss on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's say you change it to a different linen, how the colors change. Right. Um, that's color theory. Um, and what some people can do that intuitively, but I've had problems with it. So, mm -hmm. And I, she just, just so much. I just learned so much in this class. I highly recommend it. And Natalie's a fab, fabulous teacher. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, she's an incredible talent, a really terrific lady. And on top of that, a really talented teacher. Yes. Um, and her stuff is so thorough. I mean, what little I've been through, it's, it's set up so that you can operate at, at whatever level suits you best. And right. you can really go deep if you want to. If you have the time and want to, you can. She, all of it's there for you to really dig deep in in whatever area it is. Um, yeah, it's. Um, she. Right. And, and I think some people were taking the class so they could learn to couch in a circle was kind of something that people have said. And so, and I've taken, I've done a few little bit of couching with gold. Um, I, I don't particularly like it, so that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> but her um, her illustrations of it and the way she explained how to do that were wonderful. I've never seen such great, um, like on video. You know, I've taken in live classes, not on gold work, but other things where you've seen how you're supposed to hold your needle or whatever. But this was just the way she had that presented in class. I thought, well, this is this is great information. Just this alone is great information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm anxious to get back and look at, at some of the, uh, some of the things I've missed. So, so even though you don't care to do gold work, you've learned even from that part of it. Right. Right. And, and, and I was going to ask you, um, I, she has the humble couching class. Is that a beginner, um, no class on gold? no 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 because uh the, you remember she joined us and talked about all the different kinds of couching so no right. that that has all the history of couching in it uh what, you know, its origins the techniques where they came from no that i would not say that that's beginner i a an enthusiastic beginner would have no trouble with it but i would not say that i would say that um it's it's the same kind of thing where um because it was her that's based on a research paper she did for ega i believe it was uh and and i okay. read i read that paper early on and learned a lot from it just in terms of where this stuff comes from the different techniques how they're done what materials are used all of that and uh no no you'll you, if you took the the couching thing, I guarantee you, you would learn a ton. You would learn an absolute ton uh, from her on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just I was just curious because I know the this color ode to the palette class uh, is again it's not a a really a beginner class. It's someone you know an advanced beginner would be okay in it, but it's really meant for somebody who already has you know, maybe a feel for color of some sort. I don't, it's a, it's a more advanced class, but it's, it's just fabulous. And when I was describing it to my friend, Cheryl, who doesn't do handwork like what we do, she's more of an art quilter. She was like, and she's taken a lot of art classes. She was like, okay, when is she offering this class again? I think I need to <laughs> sign up for it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, well, all right. Yep. Um, which which fascinated me because she has a very good sense uh, of color. Cheryl does. And so I was really surprised she was interested in this class. Mm -hmm. um, but there's Natalie does such a great job teaching and provides such a depth in the class. Um, yeah, you're right. You could really dig deep. 
um, yeah. and learn so much. And, and I did, I've already learned and I haven't finished. There's things I haven't finished doing. I have I'm supposed to read all the papers and <laughs> write a report on one of them. <laughs> well, that's, that's not happened yet, but, um, yeah, but she, I have read some of them and yeah. lots of papers. She's done all that. She's done all that research to find all those color theory papers for you. So you're not having to dig those up. All you have to do is read them. Right. Right. Yeah. She's called out the bad ones, kept the good ones. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is, you know, that's what her, uh, her degree training is, is education. And so she has that advantage as an educator of knowing how to put together uh, a lesson plan, because she literally puts together lesson plans for these things, knowing how to structure the class so that you can succeed depending on how you learn. If you learn visually, learn by listening, or learn by reading, everybody has a tool they can use to learn. She knows how to put that all together, and then she also knows how to make sure that those who want to go above and beyond will have the resources that they need and not be frustrated. And, uh, right. uh, you know, that's, I mean, any good lesson plan offers all of that. And uh, that's, so that, that's where it really pays off with someone like her is she knows how to structure that and then uh, watch you go. And, 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 yeah, she, I mean, she wrote to me too, you know, because cause I was a non-participant, you know, is everything okay? Do you need help? Uh, she's there and, um, right. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I, there's a real comfort level with what little exposure I've had to her classes so far in, in terms of if you sign up for those things, uh, you, you're going to succeed. You're going to take more than, more than your share of information out of it and really take good value out of it. I have no doubt. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and and just one more thing is, and I like the weekly Zoom. Um, I haven't participated in all of them, but being able to go back and watch them has been helpful. Um, and then the times I have participated, the way she asks questions and breaks you out into groups, and it's very non-threatening. It's very positive experience. Um, and there's some that are a couple of people that are non English is not their first language, mm -hmm. and she is very um, welcoming to them. Um, you know, making sure that they're okay in the group they're in. Um, yeah, it's been it's fabulous. It's been I highly recommend that class. This her any of her classes, but that one has been very good. The O to the Palette class. Yep. Yeah, she's uh, she's a special lady, no doubt about it. When it comes to well, I mean, just her work alone is special, but. When it comes to putting these classes together, she really she really does it upright. Yeah, yep. Right. Yep. Sign up for Natalie Dupuy. Get follow her on Instagram. Uh, get into her newsletter or whatever so that you get informed because one of her classes will teach you things, guaranteed. Yep. Yes, and, and things you didn't think you needed to know, like for me for couching. I was it was just very helpful. Yeah. Um. Okay, we're going to talk behind Jennifer's back. Because Jennifer, okay. I, I've, and when, when she does a show, I'll talk, we'll talk about that too. But she had a piece that she was working on where she made a significant error here just in the past yes. couple of weeks. And when things needed to match up, they didn't match up. And it wasn't close. It was off, visibly off. You couldn't hide it, really. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I thought, oh, who hasn't been there? You know, oh, I, I recently, yes. <laughs> and, and I, I really felt for her and then she went and she, she tore it all out, but it, it raises that question of, do you tear it out or, you know, and Gay Ann Rogers will tell you, all right, what are you going to do to fix it? Right. You know, you're, you're off by that much. How are you going to adjust things so that you make it work without tearing all that out? And it, right. it's that great dilemma. And I think that Jennifer even asked that question. Uh, I know you, you asked the question, you know, where is it that you say, all right, I'm tearing it out. 
is there some point where you go, I'm not tearing all that out. Like if you made a major error right now on Agnes Day, Agnes Day, pardon me, Agnes Day, uh, and had to tear out a whole bunch, I don't know, would you? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I have torn out huge sections of it because um, where I was working would have made a lot of the rest totally wrong. I'm almost to the end, though. So, yeah, I probably would rip it out. It depends on on where the mistake was. Um, so if it was something I could fudge and, and move around, maybe not. But if it made the rest of the motifs off the edge be off, then no, I'd have to rip it so it looked correct. Yeah, yeah. But if my problem is I made a huge mistake on a small Mill Hill bead kit piece and it's perforated paper. Mm. So ripping that out um, can make, it, you can rip the paper. And the debate is, do I try to fudge it? And it's, it's, it's very off. It's going to make, it's a Santa piece. It, it's going to make his body look weird. And so I'm, I've, I've looked at it several thinking, do I just get another piece of perforated paper and start again? Because I think I can't fudge it. It it'll make his body look weird. <laughs> like, oh. <"Aw." laughs> and I had a friend look at it. She goes, I think the mistake is right here. And I and I looked and I was like, well, that's one mistake, and that one I could fudge, but the other one is higher, and it's, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's not always and, it's not always an easy call. I don't think. No, no, and and I think we're times. I've seen where people have done like borders on their samplers and it's off and they've ripped it all out and started again. I don't know if I would do that or I, I try to, I know I fudged it on spring Hill, spring uh -huh. Hill one. It's, it's off on the right hand side. I don't notice it now as much. So it is staying in. Now, if when I'm down further and every time I, if my eye is constantly drawn to that point, I might have to go back out and restitch an area but right now it's staying in because <laughs> is that it doesn't it? bother is, me <laughs> is that it that you have an error you decide to leave it and then if it's still bugging you three or four weeks later that that you go I back can. i mean or if it just falls out of your mind then it was okay i wonder if that's the it's point okay. that's the point and and i think what I've been told is if your eye constantly goes back to that error, 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 then you should take it out because you see it. Okay. But if it does, if you can't see it and I've, I've got a huge, um, Oh, I can't think of the name of the designer, but it's a huge long sampler and I made a mistake and I was, I said, well, I'm just going to keep moving on. I can move to the next sample section. I can't, I, I now it's, I don't know how many years ago I stitched it. I can't find that mistake. I have no clue where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm glad I left it in. Um, it wasn't worthwhile taking out. And I know Jean at the attic doesn't rip things out. She works around them. Mm -hmm. She says, life's too short. Keep <laughs> stitching. <laughs> life's too short. On that 56 count of I hers. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just it on that, on that stuff. Go ahead and find the error. Good luck. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. ripping it out, I think, would be difficult, oh. too, because you're oh. going to have those fibers in there. And, yeah, it's hard enough on 46. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm venturing that uh, Gene doesn't make many major errors, though. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but it, it is a, it's an interesting thing. What you know? What is the point of no return on something like that? And yeah, if, if it's going to visibly throw everything out of kilter the entire way, then you probably should go back and rip it out. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, if you can fudge it and get things squared up like a border, yeah, border on a sampler, if it doesn't match up, invariably you can back up a couple, three inches and just adjust one stitch here and there and make it come out even and no one would ever see it. You know, just no. never. Uh, yeah. you know, a vine going all the way around a, a 12 by 14 piece, <laughs> you know, if there's two stitches not there, that should be, yeah, no. no and, and you think of the little girls that stitch them. Some of them, 
they're funny how they they're yeah. totally wonky. Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's it's like like when we're little kids and you sit down to write a word on a piece of paper and it's not going to all fit, so you just make it go down the you side. Or, the <laughs> yeah, and they do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, clearly that corner wasn't going to work, so she just stitched it. Who cares? Yeah. Right. I got it done. Yeah. I got it done. Yeah, it's due right. tomorrow. It's due tomorrow. It's done. Leave me alone. <laughs> Right. But but I can see where Jennifer had wanted to pick hers out because she was at the beginning and it was probably going to make everything else off. Yeah. That's my other time I take things out. If I'm um, someone asked me about counting, they wanted me to count something for them. And I was like, I don't like to count. I try to get something set up. So I'm counting a short way or I'm going from what's above it or what's around it. I hardly ever, you know, count to a hundred or whatever. I just, I try to do my patterns so I can see them. Um, but counting errors are hard for me to find. So I try not to, I don't know. I just don't try to count things out. Does that make sense? I mean, oh, yeah. doing, we're doing oh, a yeah. game at Rogers piece and, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I counted mine a few million times, but, I don't want to go count yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, well that, no, that's sure. a, yeah, that's a real thing. Like that to me was one of the bigger challenges of the Hannah Longstreth, um, a sampler was these motifs that are just sitting out in space. They don't have any relationship to each other. So every time you go to start a new one, you have to count distance left and right left or right and up or down from one other motif and it could be 30 40 stitches uh you know it could be a long way and i know several of mine are off by two or three stitches you know and i would count and count and count to to get to the closest point where i could start stitching and i still know that two or three of them are are off by a couple of stitches but you'd never know it i mean you can't tell Right. Um, but yeah, that counting in space like that, where for me it's uh, insert a needle every ten stitches, and, mm -hmm. and uh, or use a bigger needle so you make a bigger hole so you can see see where every ten is, uh, you right. know. And then every time, you know, somewhere in there you'll go off by two by a stitch. It's like how can you do that? You counted it and counted it. Um, but yeah, to me that's the tough spot. Yeah, if you if you're just two right. or three stitches from a previously stitched thing, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, right. right. But to do the out in space, um, right. Yeah, I found that I always am trying to say, okay, where am I? Where can I count from? Where is the closest spot yep. that I can get to the point I want to be? Yeah, I, I I really dislike that in any design stitching in space where you just you got nothing to hang on to. You're just out in the middle of nowhere and you got to, you know, you're going to, if you don't get it right and it's off by a whole bunch, you're going to pay the price sooner or later, but uh, you got no reference point. And um, yeah, I do that. I, it, I'll get a bunch of needles out and leave them in to every 10 stitches or uh, every number of things. And, and Jennifer even mentioned in her thing that the, you know, she puts basting stitches in to, for her vertical and horizontal and all that. And it saved her. Um, little little trick there just saved her from even worse disaster. And right, right. And there's some pieces like anytime you do, um, people that do the hades, um, the big heaven oh, and earth geez. design yeah. pieces. Yeah. yeah, right. I yeah. I don't I don't like to baste, and I generally avoid it at all costs. But there's some things that just you just have to do it. You just don't have a choice. You must baste. Yeah. To, to make sure you don't lose, you know, lose where you are. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think Jennifer does yeah. that as a standard thing on hers is she'll have a vertical and horizontal thread go through. And um, I don't remember what else she does, but it pays off for her and probably a lesson learned, right. but I, I'm terrible. I don't like to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, um, I've been working on Marion Lang just a little bit. It's It's a beautiful little sampler from sassy jacks and that's what that's one thing that makes this so nice is 
um, Marion did these bands going across. So it's easy to figure out where the letters go. Mm -hmm. Um, So you get a band going and you can quickly put a letter in around it. I don't know. It's, it's a cute little sampler. If, if, for those of people who are looking for something nice and fast, but um, it's nice to have those borders. I think that's why I like band samplers better than those spot motif samplers, because I can, I can put a band in and then I can do a <laughs> reference from that band. Yeah. Yeah. Each band is, is four stitches apart. Yes. You can do that. Right. Right, right, and, and, and the left and side lines up. And if you... <laughs> right, right, and then and then um, you know you're going up on a swirl, and so there's the letter P is above that one swirl, so you can it's easy to make sure you're in the right spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something comfort. It's a comfort level with band samplers that um, yeah, yeah, not available elsewhere. Nope. Right. Nope. Right. All right. I think we're gonna have to call it here. Um, All right. Tonight, now, Kathy Ray, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on the Fiber Talk YouTube t- channel. We'll be doing uh, Thread Talk with Kathy Ray. They'll always learn things out of that. And spread the word, folks. Tell tell others about these shows. Um, you know, the, the, the podcasts are one thing, but the Wednesday live shows, uh, we've been really stringing together some great guests and some great topics. Uh, great in whose opinion? Well, but I... I mean, I really do think that we put some some quality stuff together. So spread the word and, and let people know that these things are available. I mean, to see a, a tour of Margaret Lee and then, you know, Kathy Ray and then Needle Lace with, with Carrie Noss and then, uh, oh, I cannot wait to get to Dima Santina's um, stitching. She just just such gorgeous work. And Yes, uh, she does. Yeah. So join us. Uh, it's all free. You just got to show up. That's right. So, yep. And you learn something, and you learn something. You just never know when you will, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye.